cook right now. The frames that you're getting, it's, it's going to modify the frames that you're getting from your games, basically. Jesus, okay. Um, sorry. So, oh my god, <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> I am dead. I'm deceased. Okay. And I'm going back from there. I tried. But anyways, go ahead and uh, hit Control shift on your keyboard. And while hitting Control shift you want to press F5. Alright, that's going to show your frames per second. Um, now, if we go on Roblox Wiki page real quick. Um, let's see. Here it is. This is the render step function. Now, all render step is, is basically the um, time that your game, rent, or the time that your game waits in between um, rendering every frame for your game. And what that basically translates to is, in this server that I'm in right now, um, Roblox, the Roblox game server, it's, you know, telling my computer where every player is at in the game. And, you know, telling me where every object is at. And it basically has to draw all that on the screen so that I could see it and so that the game could run smoothly. And so your, that's how your FPS is basically measured. It's um, how many frames your, um, or how many, um, how many ticks, how many times um, the game can draw a frame. And uh, or how many, how fast your computer could basically draw a frame in that time. And so my computer, or your computer is most likely capable of, it doesn't make any sense how it's snowing and I'm inside the building. And I'm still getting damage. But anyways, this is basically how fast your computer um, can run. And so, whenever you run a wild trigger loop, for example, let's say, let's say I did a loop like this, just wild trigger loop. And now this is a never-ending loop. Your computer is obviously gonna, um, you know, your CPU. If you have a one-core CPU, every every activity in your computer is probably gonna seize up because of that script right there. Uh, it's basically using your full CPU usage, you know, it's telling your computer to do something and, you know, never ending, you know, um, don't wait, don't time out or anything. So your entire application or if you're using like a one core processor or a single core processor, your entire computer is just going to seize up because um, it, it can't see what else to do because it's just stuck running that one thing, which... Um, can, can be very bad um, if there's no condition to break the sleep here. So let's imagine this um, as, let's, I'm just going to create like a makeshift uh, rendering function. And so to do that, I'm just going to say, I'm going to create a random function. I'm going to create a function called render. And this render function is basically going to get my code about other players. And then, and it's going to get info about other objects. And once it gets that info where they're located, um, draws the objects on your screen based on your based on the player slash object positions. Okay, so that's basically what that rendering function is doing. It's just drawing everything. You see the sky on top of me. That rendering function is showing that he's on top of me based on his location. Um, that the game told my computer it was located, okay? So, as you can see, my FPS is jumping between 50 and 60, but it never goes over 60. And even if it did go over 60, um, I'm on a laptop in this case. A lot of computers, they're limited to 60 hertz. We're seeing some new computers now, they're coming out with like 144 hertz, you know, 128, etc. Um, 240 hertz, so on and so forth, right? So, this hack might not be useful generally for Roblox. Back in the day, it was um, because Roblox was limited to 30 frames, and you would see 30 frames per second here. But you were able to scan a value if you were to scan 60, and you, you know, there was a real simple tutorial, and you basically scan. You scan 60 as a double, and once you scan 60, you'd be able to change that 60 to like 120 or something, and that would change your FPS cap. Well, Roblox doesn't work like that anymore, so I decided, you know, I wanted to understand more how games decided to create, you know, how they do the frame rate count and how they know when to draw something on the screen. So I created a simple program in C++ um, using the query performance counter function. 
and I'm not going to get into it because it can be a little complex for beginners, but basically what it's doing is, is simulating a game on the, uh, on my CPU, and I'm using a custom weight function so that I'm limited my frames per second to uh, 60, because basically what it's doing is, um, this 1 60th of a second, basically you're telling the game to draw a frame every 1 60th of a second, which in other words, let's get, let's see if I have Windows Calculator open. Okay, I don't. Um, I don't have a calculator in, um, in my other cheat engine, I used to have a script that just, I go to the help and it shows Windows Calculator there, but I don't have it in this case, so I'm going to go ahead and wait for it to come up. You know, my computer's been a little slow. I think I might just, might have just lost connection actually. Network receive. Okay, never mind, there we go. Okay. Okay, so if we were to divide one we're trying to we're trying to draw sixty frames in one second, right? So to draw sixty frames or uh, the game in this case is trying to draw sixty frames in one second. It doesn't wanna I believe the reason is for this is the game limits to 60 frames per second because a lot of games they could uh you know if your frame rate is higher than that you could get screen tearing and you know all kind of other nonsense just because um the game engine isn't able to handle it yet or you know current technology isn't able to handle it yet uh you know running the game at higher frame rates and on top of that if you were to be running this game like my game is on um I have a 60 hertz monitor, like I said, so even if, if I had a 60 hertz monitor, I was getting 120 frames per second, I wouldn't really see a difference, and um, plus there's only so much of a difference that the human eye can see, you know, but you really wouldn't see much of a difference, um, so this tutorial will probably only be useful to those who, you know, have a higher, uh, higher end monitor, or, you know, you're looking to use it for other games to try to find a way to bypass the frames limit on that game. So, like I was saying, Roblox is trying to draw 60 frames in one second. In order for it to draw 60 frames in one second, it goes ahead and uh, D divide 1 divided by uh, 60, okay? Now you get 0 0.01, and the 1 is the second, and then 60 is the amount of frames that you're trying to draw. So, if you wanted to draw 60 frames in one second, you'd essentially, um, so let's go back to this watcher do it, okay? So this is what you do. You cut you in your loop. Let's imagine that this loop is for rendering the game, and so you call this render function, and this render function is going to draw everything on the screen. Now, if we didn't have a wait here or something to tell it to time out, it's just going to keep rendering and drawing things on the screen as fast as it can, you know, without any type of fault. So our frames per second would be skyrocketing right now. But to prevent that, um, you need like a little wait function, you know, tell the to tell the CPU or the um, graphics, the GPU to, you know, kind of slow down, don't draw the frames that fast, and, oh, look at that, I did survive that round, I think, yeah, I did, okay, but yeah, essentially, you need to tell the computer, yeah, you know, don't draw frames, you know, so fast, and there's no reason to be drawing that fast, because that's just wasting resources, especially if you're limited at 60 hertz, like I said, so you're not going to really see a difference, so, um, with snowpad so you're going to run this loop and this render function is going to draw the frames obviously but we're going to create a timeout to tell it hey you know after you call this render function wait this many um seconds or wait 0 0.016 seconds that's like uh fewer the times that went by, by a thousand that's like 16 milliseconds basically so this is basically 16 milliseconds, or you could also just say 0 0.01666667 uh, seconds, but it's easier to say 16 milliseconds, okay? So that basically means that we're going to call this render function every 16 milliseconds, and then by then, um, in this custom weight function too, uh, or you'd have to, uh, you'd have to determine once, um, 
that many time has gone by. So let's say you call this function, okay? You call it 60 times. Now, once you hit 60, um, you basically see, it, you know, how many frames was drew, um, drawn within that time because depending on how fast your computer is going, it might not be able to do 60 frames per second, which is why you see the frames per second go down every now and then because your computer might be doing other things or, you know, it just gets too intense. You know, there's explosions on the screen and that tends to slow things down because your computer has to do more. So you're not going to get as high as a print, you know, as, as high or as many frames as possible because your computer sometimes have to slow down to do certain things. Damn, I just got stuck down. But anyways, so we're going to use this value to our advantage. Um, whenever, I would definitely recommend you try to see how to create your own frames per second counter. And if that's something that you guys would like me to make, I might make a tutorial on that because it will make you better understand the topic. But basically from that basic knowledge and me creating a C++ program, I was able to find out that um, I could just literally scan this value here, and that would basically, um, well, I didn't notice at first, I was just kind of giving it a shot, you know, because um, I had a game run at 168 of a second, so I decided to scan this value, and you could literally manip manipulate this value to change the amount of frames that you're getting, so what are you going to do, um, since it's such a long decimal, uh, for, you know, smaller decimals, I say it may be stuck um, around here where my cursor was. You'll normally use float, but it's such a long decimal. So in this case, we're going to use a double. And I'm just going to type, let's see, I'm just going to try 0 0.0136. Um, we want to make sure we check, check our rounded the default. Um, simple values only. Um, I'm, I'm debating between rounded default and truncated. It's been a while since I've done this, but I'm just going to press scan and see. Where I oh, gotta select the process first. I'm gonna turn this sound off. Alright, select the process here. Okay, now we're Gucci. Go ahead and hit first scan. Yeah, and it's been like, you could see my cheat engine is, I've, I don't think I've closed my cheat engine since I've, um, hold on. Let's try truncated. Let's just do 0 0.0, 0 0.6. Let's try that. So my battery is running low. Let me charge it real quick. Okay, so, wow, what the fuck, seriously? Alright guys, I'm back. My computer decided it didn't care if I plugged my charger and it was going to die on me anyway, so yeah, I had to cut the video real quick. Man, well, now we're in a different game, and uh, we're just going to kind of continue from where we left off. I'm about to wrap the video up, so. So, um, you know, so select the Roblox process again. Don't attach the debugger or your game will disconnect. You don't want to do that. So, like I was saying, 0 0.0166 truncated. Go ahead and hit first scan. All right, so we got 198 results, guys. That's a little too many. So we're, we're just going to keep, you know, for higher precision, we're just going to keep adding some sixes. You know, we're just going to keep hitting next scan. And, okay. There we go. Now we got very few results. So we'll bring these two down here. And you can see 0 0.0166667 for both of these here. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit Control Shift F5 again. And as you can see, I'm getting around 60 frames. Okay. So I want to try to get 120 frames. So, oh crap, I didn't even add a 20 of those right there. Anyways, I want to try to get 120 frames, so, like I said, um, to get 120 frames in a second, to see that time, you divide that one by 120, and it's telling me here 0 0.008 seconds, okay, or 120th of a second, so that's what that looks like, so, um, I'm going to change 
the value so if I have something like that I'm just going to try the second value first here 0 0.08 ok so that didn't do anything so it can't be that one so I don't know what frames are oh actually it's, it looks like it's going up oh yeah there it is that was the right one but it's not precise it's not exactly 0 0.008 let me see yeah, that's what it is, 0 0.008. Let me try this second value here, or this first value here. Okay, so yeah, it's the second one. Um, I was wondering why I was getting less frames, because as you can see, I wasn't getting like exactly 120. It was going up there but it wasn't near 120 and I realized the reason for that is jumping around all around so much because I'm recording a video but um, just to show you guys that this actually works now like I said you won't really see a difference if you if you're limited to a 60 Hertz monitor you're only gonna see around 60 frames per second because you're just limited by the hardware okay but um, to simulate to show you guys that this is actually the frames um, modifier this is not like it's not just visual you know it's not like just edit in the text it's actually legit um, if you want to actually see a difference I'm gonna change it to about 20 or you know I'm gonna change it about 20 frames and it, the performance should turn to be a, a really choppy and slow so let's try 0. Point, what was that 0 0.05 Yep, 0 0.05. Okay. Let's see. I set it to 0 0.05. Now I'm in the I'm in the 20s now, and you know you can notice the performance is just slowly, slowly sinking down. Um, not running as good as it should. So let's try even lower. Let's try like the 0 0.1. see that this is just getting more and more choppy the more I slow it down the more choppier it's getting um, let's try let's go even a step further and make it 0 0.5 and now it's really slow now it's really laggy everything is completely slowed down you know so yeah guys that's basically how to do it real simple um, Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, it might not work as efficient for Roblox, but you might be able to try this on different games and uh, create a uh, create an exploit that way for that specific game. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, if you like this video, share it. You know, tell people about my channel, trying to get the word out. Um, if you have any requests for tutorials to make in the future, just let me know in the comments, and I'll be happy to provide you. Thank you for watching.